Despite spanning more than 20 movies over the last decade, the MCU is still going from strength to strength. But with each new Marvel movie and series, the franchise becomes that much more difficult for newcomers to penetrate. Here's what you need to know before Marvel's Phase 4 begins. Despite her death in 2019's Avengers Endgame, Natasha Romanoff will finally be getting a solo film with the first major Phase 4 release, Black Widow. But don't expect a last-minute resurrection for Scarlett Johansson's Super Spy. The film is a prequel set between the events of 2016's Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. Many of the plot details for Black Widow are still under wraps, but a little has been revealed about the heroes and villains joining Natasha for the movie. Florence Pugh will play Yelena Belova a character who for a time took over the mantle of Black Widow in Marvel Comics. David Harbour will play a character known as the Red Guardian, Russia's answer to Captain America. Over a half dozen people have been the Red Guardian in the source material, though Harbour will be playing Alexei Shostakov, the first Red Guardian to appear in the comics. It seems likely that not all of the villains have been revealed just yet, but one of the major antagonists will be Taskmaster. In the comics, Taskmaster has the uncanny ability to mimic just about anything he sees someone else do. No matter how outlandish or difficult, expect an appearance from Incredible Hulk and Civil War villain Thaddeus Ross too. Unfortunately, with the outbreak of coronavirus, early in 2020, the release date of Black Widow has been delayed, which could have a significant impact on the rest of the Phase 4 projects. But when things finally do get into gear, Natasha Swansung will be a hell of a way to kick things off. After Black Widow, the next Marvel heroes to hit the big screen will be The Eternals, a creation of the late great Jack Kirby. Based largely on characters from Greco-Roman myth, the Eternals are a powerful race of heroes created by the godlike Celestials. Though they mostly live in hiding, the Eternals protect Earth, specifically from the villainous Deviants. Kirby's Eternals series was cancelled with its 19th issue, though there have been attempts at comic book reimaginings and revivals of the characters over the years, including a 2006-2007 series by author Neil Gaiman and artist John Romita Jr. Sadly, details of the film's actual story are kind of scarce. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the film will include a love story between Icarus and another Eternal, Cersei. And an official synopsis for the movie has revealed that the team will be spurred into action by a tragedy following the events of Endgame. But at this point, everything else is pretty much just speculation. The first Disney Plus MCU series is A Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which, as of right now, is set to be released in August 2020. As you would expect, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan will be reprising their MCU roles for this one. I hate you. Not much is known about the story just yet, but a few old friends and foes will be returning. In particular, Daniel Brawl will reprise his role as Helmut Zemo, and Emily Van Camp will appear as Sharon Carter. One of the more persistent rumors about the miniseries is that despite the elderly Steve Rogers' wishes, the US government won't agree with Sam Wilson becoming the new Captain America. Instead, they'll tap their own replacement, John Walker, otherwise known as US Agent. The idea comes from an 80s comic book storyline in which Rogers gives up his shield and uniform, and the government gives it instead to Walker. The Super Bowl TV spot highlighting Marvel's upcoming Disney Plus shows seem to support this. Although Sam and Bucky are obviously the focus, the trailer depicts John Walker in a Captain America uniform, waving to the audience at some kind of big sporting event. WandaVision is due to premiere in 2020 on Disney Plus, and there's a decent chance it'll be the weirdest thing Marvel has ever done. Judging by the Disney Plus trailer and a number of rumors swirling around the show's production, it seems that the Android Vision's return will take place in a bizarre sitcom format. The Super Bowl spot features a few hints that hark back to some major Marvel comic storylines. One shot, for example, shows Wanda on a staircase wearing a costume much more accurate to her comic book look. More intriguingly, there's also a shot in which two pacifiers pop up out of cribs in front of the couple, clearly alluding to Vision and Wanda's sons Billy and Tommy. Even the setting seems to call back to the 2015-2016 Vision comic by Tom King and Gabriel Hernandez Walter, which finds the android living in an idyllic suburb with a family of homemade androids. It's important to remember here that Wanda's powers in the comics and the movies are very different. So far in the MCU, Wanda has been portrayed as a woman with very powerful telekinetic powers. In the comics, however, her abilities can alter reality itself. It could be that WandaVision is going to bring her abilities a little closer to the source material, especially considering the series is supposed to tie directly into the plot of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. 
In February 2021, the third of Marvel's Phase 4 films will hit theaters, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Shang-Chi is a character Marvel Comics conceived in the 70s to cash in on the martial arts movie craze, but he wasn't given his powers by stray cosmic rays or toxic waste or a radioactive Bruce Lee. Instead, he fights evil with nothing but his skill, determination, and the mastery of his chi. Shang-Chi dropped off the radar for the most part after the 70s, but his star began rising again in the 2010s. Jonathan Hickman brought the Kung Fu Master on board for his 2013 reworking of Avengers, and more recently, he has appeared as one of the members of Agents of Atlas. Fans are still largely in the dark about the plot of Shang-Chi. Some rumors have suggested the film will be Marvel's version of a martial arts tournament movie along the lines of Mortal Kombat or Bloodsport. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings promises to bring to the screen a villain who's been hinted at since 2008's Iron Man. In the comics, one of Iron Man's most vicious enemies is the Mandarin, an evil mastermind who possesses ten magical rings he recovered from an alien spaceship. The Mandarin isn't mentioned by name in Iron Man, but Raza, the terrorist who captures Tony Stark, belongs to an organization called the Ten Rings. Fans were fooled into thinking Ben Kingsley would be playing the Mandarin in 2013's Iron Man 3, but instead he played dim-witted actor Trevor Slattery. Who had been hired to play the infamous terrorist by Aldridge Killian. He needed someone to take credit for some accidental explosions. At last, however, the real Mandarin will be appearing in the upcoming Shang-Chi film, played by Tony Leung. Some rumors suggest that, in the MCU, the Mandarin will actually be Shang-Chi's father. The idea makes sense, too. In the comics, Shang-Chi is introduced as the son of a villain, Fu Manchu. But because of some IP rights issues associated with the character, there's basically zero chance he'll be able to appear in the upcoming movie. In May 2021, Marvel Studios will release Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Few details about the film are known, but the title itself suggests at least a couple of ideas that will likely be central to the plot. When Doctor Strange premiered in 2016, it became the first MCU film to confirm the narrative existed in the multiverse, in which infinite parallel universes exist, each either a little or a whole lot different from the MCU's prime universe. It's the multiverse the Ancient One and Bruce Banner argue about in Endgame when the former worries that if she gives a Time Stone to Banner, it will splinter her time stream into a parallel universe that will be doomed without the stone to protect it. It's only speculation at this point, but what seems like a big possibility is that the Doctor Strange sequel will deal with the fallout of either Endgame or WandaVision both of which take place in realities concurrent to the prime MCU universe. And with the villain Nightmare rumored to appear, as well as the steady hand of horror legend Sam Raimi behind the camera, you can expect this one to get seriously freaky. Of what little is known regarding the upcoming Thor Love and Thunder, one of the most intriguing details is that not only will Natalie Portman's Jane Foster return, but at some point she will become the mighty Thor. It's unclear just how Foster will become Thor in the movie, but this did actually happen for four years in Marvel Comics. As a result of the 2014 line-wide event Original Sin, the original Thor loses his worthiness and hence his ability to lift Mjolnir. At first, her identity is kept secret, but eventually it's revealed that it's Jane Foster who lifts Mjolnir when Odin and can't. Foster remains as Marvel's Mighty Thor until 2018's Mighty Thor issue 705, when she sacrifices her hammer in order to defeat the destructive villain Mangog. While she no longer has the ability to summon lightning, she became the new Valkyrie after the 2018-19 event War of the Realms. The 2020 Super Bowl Disney Plus TV spot didn't show much of Loki, but it did provide one interesting detail that a lot of comics fans noticed right away. During the trailer, Loki is shown wearing a prisoner's uniform with the acronym TVA written on it, which seems likely to be referencing a somewhat obscure fictional organization known as the Time Variance Authority. First appearing in 1986's Thor issue 372, the Time Variance Authority seeks to minimize any changes to the normal flow of time through the multiverse. When they're first introduced, they're represented by the Judge Dredd-esque Justice Peace, but in later appearances, they're shown to be a vast, comically bureaucratic organization. In 1991's Fantastic Four Annual Issue 24, it's revealed that most of the TVA's employees are clones bred to serve the TVA for life, and those clones are specifically drawn to resemble Marvel writer and editor Mark Grunewald. Considering this series will focus on the version of Loki who escaped into a parallel timeline during the events of Avengers Endgame, it makes sense the TVA would be heavily involved in his new series. 
What If is scheduled for the summer of 2021. This animated series will cover all of the films from the Infinity Saga, asking what would have happened if things turned out differently. Early hints point toward a story in which Peggy Carter becomes Captain Britain, one in which T'Challa is Star-Lord, and even an adaptation of Marvel Zombies, a series of comics featuring the heroes and villains of Marvel turned into zombies, first written by Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman. What If is named after an actual comic series which premiered in 1977. Each issue of What If is narrated by the mysterious figure The Watcher, who in this series will be played by Westworld star Jeffrey Wright. If the animated series writers go the same route as the comic books, expect a lot of death in this series. Freed from the constraints of continuity, What If writers often take the opportunity to kill off marquee characters. One particularly bloody example is 1984's What If, issue 45, when a newly transformed Hulk kills the Human Torch, the Thing, and Iron Man, only to die himself at Thor's hands. Should be fun. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the MCU are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.